Have you heard a soapbox speech that brought important awareness to an issue, but was about as flat as a Kansas highway and about as exciting as watching weeds grow? Well, we're here to put an end to these and create moving, impactful student speeches in the process. As you know, the students across our district have a wide variety of experience and perspectives that are vital to shaping our future. But how do you effectively teach a student to engage with the crowd, deliver their speech to create concrete action, and gain support from the community? As Shakespeare once said, that is the question. In this short video, we'll attempt to answer these questions as we explore some helpful hints regarding how to help your students become effective and passionate communicators. Let's kick things off by listening to a typical speech delivered by our very own student speaker, Annie. We'll then highlight some tools that you can use to take your student's speeches to the next level. Feminism, misogyny, sexism. What does that mean and why should any of us care? Well, discrimination isn't this abstract, intangible idea. It affects the lives of us all. We always hear, we need more women in STEM. The blatant disrespect and disregard for women in these spaces is one reason for such sparse female graduation rates in these fields. It's clear that sexist behaviors from men in academia and positions of power lead to these discrepancies. Let's pause for a moment. Our speaker has chosen a powerful topic, but is there evidence to support her speech? It's important to properly cite sources to give your argument credibility. It proves to your listeners that your topic and your speech are thoroughly researched, and it will help to draw them in. This doesn't mean that you should cite the entire publisher and author in MLA format. Just provide the name of an author or a source that shows that your point is trustworthy, as well as providing a date for that source. For example, in this speech, Annie is discussing women working in various STEM fields. One question that the audience might have is about the proportion of women to men employed in these fields. Maybe she could provide statistics on the prevalence of women obtaining STEM degrees, or cite something on the treatment of women in these fields. But what does that have to do with you? Well, today I'm going to explain why you, yes you, have implicit sexist biases and how you can unlearn them to make your spaces safer for the women around you. What is implicit bias? It's an attitude that we have towards certain people that we are unaware of causing us to treat them differently. In this case, it would be treating women differently because of their gender presentation, etc. and being unaware of this bias. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Slow down there, sister. Way, way down. I love the fact that you took the time to memorize your entire speech, but it's not a race. No one receives a prize for ripping through their speech the fastest. The goal of this soapbox speech is to share your passion and convey your message to the audience. Have you heard of Albert Moravian's 7, 38, and 55 rule? The rule states that only 7% of meaning is communicated through spoken word, 38% through tone voice, and 55% through body language. It is clear from her speech that Annie excels at the written word. What she needs to do now is give the audience enough time to digest and empathize with her message. And that comes with delivering her speech at a pace where she can be understood. The first step is understanding this implicit bias. The second step is acknowledging that you have it because it's something you aren't aware of until you analyze your behavior and identify it as so. Make the unconscious conscious. The third step is to know how to stop it and change your behavior accordingly. The amount of times I've heard the blatant objectification and sexualization of women's bodies by men around me is just disturbing to say the least. With the subtle dust of wind, I start to notice the foreboding shadow of the trees. Alarmed, I look behind us and I'm struck with fear. A large column of smoke crowds my field of view and I freeze. Here, I just drop you into a scene. How did it feel? By describing the visual world, evoking emotion, and creating a mental image, you're using imagery. Imagery can be one of the most moving tools in your toolbox, as you can make your speech an engaging and impactful process. So use it and create awesome work with it. Bonus tip. For most speeches, an opening hook can be accomplished by placing the audience member in a scene, in other words, spoken imagery. For example, in an environmental speech, consider placing them in a disaster. For a societal justice speech, you may put them in an awkward situation. For an advocacy speech, imagine with them a brighter future. However, this isn't the only way to produce a hook. Things like hypotheticals, shocking statistics, and interesting quotes work as well. Well, who's to blame for this? 
everyone. It's on you, it's on your friends that ridicule women, it's on the people that let them get away with it. It's on you. How do you combat this? Schools are microcosms of society, so if we can change things in our schools, maybe society at large can also change with transforming attitudes. As an individual, if you hear a language that is harmful, maybe not to yourself, but to the people around you, check it. If you hear a guy interrupting a girl when she's speaking, point it out, call them out, bring it to light. Bring to light the discomfort of those situations, the harm caused by derogatory language, the hurt of being discredited by your peers. Make the invisible live visible, be conscious of the unconscious, change starts with you. Remember the 738.55 rule? Well, that 55% is incredibly important. Your body language and hand gestures are visual cues that allow you to emphasize certain points. And they catch people's attention and make them want to listen to you. If you don't seem passionate or excited about your speech, how can you expect your audience to be? The first step is to establish your body language from the very beginning of the soapbox speech. Plant your feet on the floor, put your shoulders back, raise your chin, and face your audience. This will show your confidence and encourage them to pay attention. Throughout your speech, make eye contact with members of the audience. Remember, your goal is to connect with them. Next, you need to focus on your tone of voice. Nobody wants to listen to someone who talks like a robot. Even though you will know your speech by heart, it's the first time your audience is hearing it, so you need to express the feelings that you want your audience to feel. Vary your tone, raising your voice for important parts of your speech. You can also slow down on points you really want to drive home, or leave a little pause after them so that your point really sinks in. Have you ever noticed how people who talk with their hands seem more passionate? Using hand gestures is the cherry on top of a perfect speech. Make sure to use the majority of your hand gestures within the range of your chest or upper body, and find some gestures that match with what you're trying to say. For example, you could talk about turning the page to a new era, or point at the audience at a part in your speech where you discuss accountability. This is also the perfect time to remember to make eye contact. Feminism. Misogyny. Sexism. What does that mean and why should any of us care? Well, discrimination isn't this abstract, intangible idea. It affects the lives of us all. For women in academia, according to Western Governors University 19, only 20% of engineering degrees and 19% of physical science degrees are obtained by women. We always hear, we need more women in STEM, but we're never told the causes for these statistics. The blatant disrespect and disregard for women in these spaces is one reason for such sparse female graduation rates in STEM fields. For example, a while ago, I saw a video clip of a girl recording her college engineering class. Both the professor and male students were discussing harassing women in the class. But even as high up as the Supreme Court, Yang 21 from The Guardian explains how SCOTUS had to change how it structured oral arguments because the male attorneys and justices were so prone to interrupting their female counterparts. It's clear that sexist behaviors from men in academia and positions of power lead to these discrepancies. But what does that have to do with you? Well, today I'm going to explain why you, yes you, have implicit sexist biases and how you can unlearn them to make your spaces safer for the women around you. What is implicit bias? It's an attitude that we have towards certain people that we're unaware of, causing us to treat them differently. In this case, it would be treating women differently based on their gender, presentation, etc., and being unaware of this bias. The first step is understanding this implicit bias. The second step is acknowledging that you have it because it's something you aren't aware of until you analyze your behavior and identify it as so. Make the unconscious conscious. The third step is to know how to stop it and change your behavior accordingly. Observe how you treat the women around you in class, how that makes them feel, how your behavior affects them. You're probably thinking, I don't ever make, pe make people feel uncomfortable. However, you might not notice that women are demonized and dehumanized on a daily, in casual conversation. The amount of times I've heard the blatant objectification and sexualization of women's bodies by men around me is just disturbing to say the least. Well, who's to blame for this? Everyone. It's on you, it's on your friends that ridicule women, it's on the people that let them get away with it. It is on you. But how can we combat this? Schools are microcosms of society. So if we can change things in our schools, maybe society at large can also change with transforming attitudes. As an individual, if you hear language that is harmful, maybe not to yourself, but to the people around you, check it. If you hear a guy interrupting a girl when she's speaking, point it out, call them out, bring it to light. 
Bring to light the discomfort of those situations, the harm caused by derogatory language, the hurt of being discredited by your peers. Make the invisible visible. Be conscious of the unconscious. Change starts with you. These are a few tips you can begin teaching your students that can help tremendously bring a new level of engagement to the audience when giving a soapbox speech. A good speech requires well-crafted language, strong logic, passion, proper pacing, voice variation, tone, eye contact, and hand gestures. Annie, with the advice from a few of her peers, has improved her speech in these respects and delivered an excellent version in the end. Through practice and repetition, she has now mastered the techniques we will talk about and has given an outstanding soapbox speech. And with these helpful hints, your students can too. Please check out the History Social Science site to learn how you and your students can get the opportunity to speak out about issues that affect them and their communities.